We're Renee. And Courtney, your online sisters, and we're on a mission to help women across the world become the best version of themselves through the power of sisterhood. That's why we've written To My Sisters, a guide to building lifelong friendship. From working out how to achieve your dreams to setting boundaries and managing expectations, this essential handbook will show you how to fully embrace the power of friendship and community. Packed with practical advice and personal stories from our decade-long friendship, we'll give you all the tools and advice you need to find, make and keep lifelong friendship. To My Sisters is available now online and at all good bookshops. Quan, 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 breaking, breaking news, news, breaking news. The girls are failing. <laughs> the men are failing worse. <laughs> this preoccupation, particularly by men, with gold that they don't currently have. And women digging for it. A lot of people are ruining the dating streets in a pool which they're not going to date in. This is why we are constantly having marriages that are failing. Because a lot of people are not seeing their partner, but they're seeing their partner as proxy hello and welcome to the two my sisters podcast i'm courtney and i'm renee and we are your online sisters and hosts of the two my sisters podcast we are all about promoting the wellness growth and development of a community of sisters across the world and in today's episode we're going to be talking about modern day relationships as we do as we do is everyone going to end up single and alone ah (laughs) glory be (laughs) (laughs) because it's intercession that this this generation is going to be serious warfare actually so god be the glory let's all take our uh, shekels and everybody take a seat in the pew (laughs) it's a flogging Anyways, hopefully that won't happen after you've listened to this podcast <laughs> episode. But before we get into the juiciness, we do have a couple of housekeeping news. Oh. The first housekeeping is the lovely Miss CDB is now officially 26. Oh, like, yeah. check her out. Like, yes, isn't she giving maturity? On isn't she just giving absolutely just, wow, 26. What can I say? 26. I'm extremely thankful. Thank you for all the birthday wishes <laughs> and the prayers. It's given Oscar. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I wasn't Glory expecting to God, this. You know, all thanks be to the praise most be, high. Praise be, Jesus. Be, praise be, uh, praise be. <laughs> but honestly, like, yeah, it was my birthday. 26. I enjoyed friends, family, all loved ones. I was happy. I love that for you, man. Thank you very much. She's finally crossed over into 26 and now we're both age mates, like proper age mates. Yes. And all of the uh, banter around my age is going to stop. Hopefully, So she thinks, but she's yeah, closer to continue. 27 than me. You've started. Yeah. You've actually started. <laughs> my ministry must continue. I not even think that this is the challenge. This <laughs> is the challenge. One door closes, well, another door opens. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be. <laughs> But sisters, thank you so much for all of the well wishes on behalf of Courtney. I know you guys have been just pouring it out. Thank you guys for your ongoing love and support, not just of Courtney, but also all the work that she does and thank all the work you. that we do. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Thank We're you. continuing to fight the good fight of we faith. Actually are. So thank you all so much. And I think this is a really critical, great time to really remind you guys that we do have a book out. And Ooh, if you really do want to show the sisters some appreciation, you might want to support the sisters yeah. by appreciating with a copy of the two my sisters how book. about how that? about honestly that? though thank you for all the copies that have been bought we do get reports of you know books sold and stuff from our publishers and we are continuously blown away by how many of you actually have our book so continue to tag us on instagram Absolutely. when you unbox it as you listen to it as you stream it on audible um but honestly we are so so grateful thank you for allowing this to truly be a sisterhood movement and for living it out we love you guys. We love you guys. And please, please, please write a review. Leave a review on yes. Amazon. We would love that. We would. You know, and re- whilst you're at it, why don't you go over to, Sp- you know, Apple and just leave yeah. a little, little something, something, a little tidbit. Or you know, like that can be the video. offering. I know some of you have talked about an offering basket. Yes. The offering, spare some change, give us some reviews. Clink, clink, clink. clink, clink. <laughs> but honestly, sisters, again, thank you so much for your ongoing support. And we are so excited to meet some of you in our international experiences. We are going to my homeland of Ghana ah uh, and then we are in Renee's birthday mom taking a good flight over to <laughs> Sa- 
in terms of developments and other relationships in your life to the point where you feel like you may not have the capacity yep. for a romantic relationship but I don't think you can keep human beings on standby and I think that's a a behavior in dating which you sometimes have to nip in the bud and which I personally just don't condone which is I'm keeping you around because mm-hmm. when I finally decide that I'm ready I want you to be available to me um but also I want to still get the benefits of the intimacy and the emotional support from friendship right, right. now so I think It's really one of two things, which is either you accept the fact that you can have him as a friend right now, but in order to also be his friend, you have to be there for the major things that are happening in his life, which includes his dating life, right? And being there to give him um, advice. And it's unfair to ask him to not talk to you about that, but still want him to be there and available for you to offload on him when he can't share with you. So I think you have to accept that if he's going to be in your Um, life as a friend he's also going to need you to be there for him as a friend um and when the time comes that you may want to be in a romantic relationship in the future with him he may already be in a relationship and it's your loss because when you had the chance Mm. it didn't it didn't happen do you get what i mean and then the other option is you start to kind of explore the possibility of having a relationship with him now and you can take it slow but you can let him know my desire is actually for this to evolve into a relationship a romantic relationship are you down and uh, are you down basically and see how that progresses. and you can decide to take it slow because you know I'm still healing from certain things that are happening in my life or I'm still processing other things which are happening around me um would we be able to take things a bit slow but knowing that we're intentionally walking in this direction yeah. um and see if he wants to sign up for that but I think it's it would be unfair to expect him to just be around um and then be suddenly available for you because and also it may lead you um set you up sorry for bigger heartbreak yeah where when you're kind of like, oh, I'm ready and I really want him. And we've built, we've built this emotional connection through friendship. And he's like, no, I still don't, I still don't want that. I still don't want to be in a relationship with you. And it's like, oh, um, I wasn't processing that. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? I so expecting. also, I think one thing that could help is dating other people yourself yeah, as well. Yeah. If he's dating people in this period, you should also try dating people. And if you don't want to date people, you shouldn't hold him back from dating other people because there mm. is no mutual agreement between you both that your friendship is leading to anything other than friendship, you know? Um, so for me, I think you... I don't want to invalidate your feelings. You do have a dilemma here, but sometimes you just can't have your cake and eat it, right? right? right, You have to allow other people to be free. And if you don't want to hear about his dating life because it makes you uncomfortable, you may have to also accept that that comes with distancing the friendship, which means that you also don't get to benefit Mm -hmm. from the intimacy and the closeness, which you currently know that you need. Mm -hmm. So really it's about making a big girl decision about whether you're going to suck up your emotions or whether you're going to vocalize them. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Literally encore, encore. That's exactly what I would have said. I think... Even the sign off for confused sister, sis, you're confused right now. So you don't want to add confusion into the situation. Facts. So it might require, not even might require, it necessitates you being clear mm. on where you currently stand mm. and then moving accordingly. Mm. So it requires you to make a decision. Do you want to take the chance and pursue this? Mm. If so, then pursue it. As Courtney said, slowly, you can take your time, let him know in terms of timelines and stuff that you're still feeling things out. Mm. Or you say, no, I'm not interested. And then you need to, keep it our buck and keep it moving because it's absolutely not fair to put him in the situation of should i shouldn't i I? where are we where should we go especially as it links to his own love life and his own well-being and you know wellness damn didn't know i'll be out here advocating for a man right now you know what i'm saying girl you know sometimes we have sometimes we've got to tell the sisters when yeah i know i know and i know there's a whole host of like different feelings and emotions and i know it's a difficult time for you as well um out of university so different contexts you may be seeing him in a different light yeah. there's so many other things that you're interacting with right now it's a turbulent time in life which can also add to the confusion so i think even separating out where the confusion is coming mm. from would be really helpful in helping you gain clarity over the situation and how you feel with him and over him 
um, and not allowing all of these external factors to feed into that confusion in the relationship between you two. Because I think clarity, and it's something we're actually going to get into in this episode on modern relationships, but something like clarity is a rare thing, mm. even though it is one of the most integral mm. things when it comes to pursuing meaningful relationships, yeah. whether it be platonic or it be romantic. Right. So please take some time to decide which one you'd like to pursue and stick with it. Mm. But sis, we're sending you so much love. There are many people that are in a similar situation as you. Lots of sisters, lots of brothers. Um, and we implore you to just take the time out to really gain some clarity over how you feel and then express it and move forward with conviction. That's what we really mm. need from you. Clarity and conviction. conviction. So sending you lots and lots of love. Um, and we hope things go well. Keep us posted on what you decide to do. We'd love a follow up. And on that note, sisters, if you do have any other dilemmas, whatever it may be, there's no holds bars here. There are no, it doesn't have to be appropriate. It can be wholly inappropriate and totally anonymous. We do not mind. We are here. Please send us a dilemma at dilemmas. At, wow, that was a lot of entanglement. Right <laughs> send over your issues. <laughs> Not a lot of Send over your issues <laughs> to dilemmas at to my sisters.com and we will, like a genie, try and solve and grant you your wishes. We will. Moving on to the meat, mm. the main course. That was the start. It gave you a little bit, little bit of an entree. A little bit. And then we have something. entered into nonsense because that is where I feel many of us are. Um, this is a continuation. <laughs> Go to your face. <laughs> This is a continuation of last week's conversation Indeed. where we dug deep into the failings of modern society, Jesus. capitalism, Whoa. prosperity, oh gospel, God. peer pressure, Jesus. all of this. Is, everything is on fire. It's everything everywhere all Set at once, flood. all the time. Set the flood. Set the flood. <laughs> and we wanted to touch on relationships in a separate episode yeah. because... The girlies are up in arms. And not just the girlies, the man them, the manosphere, up in arms. Them more. Even, even them, them more, more, yeah, absolutely. The incel community, relationships. Yeah. And you know, obviously over here at To My Sisters, we're expansive when we refer to relationships. So obviously we'll be talking about platonic relationships, but we're also talking about primarily romantic relationships. Yeah. The modern yeah. relationship yeah. and why it feels like everyone is failing and at the moment. And it's so important to talk about this because I think... We as women, especially if you do want to engage in a, in a romantic relationship, and we as people in general, when we desire to engage in romantic relationships, yeah. we really need them to be healthy. I exactly. think there's a lot of evidence about how romantic relationships can actually ruin ruin one's life um, if done wrong or if it creates a toxic in, environment or an unhealthy situation. So yeah, um, I think in the past, we've definitely had that like eye roll, more relationship content, but I think it's important for us as women to really talk about for sure. what is a healthy relationship for us, especially for our own safety and advancement. For sure. um, but go on in describing the nonsense that's so, happening. It has been brought to my attention. I feel like a, a news correspondent. <laughs> it, has been, it has been brought to my attention. Incoming news. That everybody is failing quang, in relationships. Quang, quang, breaking, quang, news, quang, breaking, breaking news, news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> the girls are failing. <laughs> the men are failing worse. <laughs> <laughs> Also, my hair spikes are not cooperating. Anyway, you guys know I look cute typically. There anyway. you go. You look cute. Yeah. It's um, but yeah, modern relationships are in hot water. Yeah, Red hot. Danger, yeah, danger, yeah, danger. Yeah. Where it feels like we are constantly, the genders, the multiple genders, are fighting on the internet, smashing it out. Where you've got a whole community, speaking about the manosphere, incels that are... For uh, for the most part, deeply misogynistic, mm. deeply, deeply hurt by women in their lives, as mm. well as women as a whole, coming up against a whole segment of women who are very much anti-children, anti-being in any kind of relationship that causes any kind of minor discomfort right. here for women's wrongs, as well as women's rights. Mm. Mm. So I think the first question that I have is, what do you think has led to such polarization between <sighs> women and men? And obviously we're referring to very heteronormative terms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so do forgive us. Yes, please. But I mean, there is also, I mean, maybe it's just that the heteronormative folk are just messing up, messing up, messing up, and we have to focus on them. But in terms of that deep polarization yeah. right now between the genders, what do you think is contributing to this sense of animosity, particularly yeah. online, but we're really seeing it like, 
pour out into real life yeah. where it's almost as if men despise women and women despise, despise men, men to the point that we're seeing things like um lower birth rates we're seeing the breakdown of family units we're seeing high skyrocketing rates of divorce what the heck is going on man well you know renee i don't particularly <laughs> have all the answers but i do have an idea i can try <laughs> i can try um i think the main thing for me is as a defense mechanism i think a lot of us have defaulted into something which is very human mm -hmm. but also quite almost opposite mm -hmm. to love and relationships and community yeah. which is self-preservation right i think that in an attempt to preserve and protect ourselves in the face of what looks a lot like moral failure and a breaking of vows yeah. and just a general lack of seriousness around commitment and lifelong commitment like marriage or serious relationships um, and the exclusivity or the loyalty that comes with that, a lot of us have decided I'm going to protect myself. Mm. And that protection looks like me going into a relationship with one thing in mind only, which is what can I gain? Mm. And not just what can I gain in terms of, I won't have to lose anything, but it's almost as though all the pain that can come with a relationship yep. can be solved and soothed by a general feeling of one-upping or at least like you were saying women's wrongs i think a lot of pe people want to advocate for women's wrongs not yeah. to say we've talked about um women being villains uh, in quite a few episodes in the past i think a lot of people want women to have i guess the right to be wrong mm. because it feels as though women have been wronged so many times yep, yep, yep. do you get what i mean so if you're gonna wrong me why can't I also do the wrong thing? Yeah, do you get yeah, what yeah. I mean? And so I think it's unfortunate that so many of us are going into something which is supposed to surround selflessness with that mindset of self-preservation and self-protection and it manifesting in selfishness. Mm. When you're in a relationship that is so committed to and should be about serving the other person in the trust and in the faith that they will also be committing their life to serve you mm -hmm, and see mm -hmm. you bettering yourself. I think one of the great, most unfortunate things is so many of us go into it thinking about just ourselves, right? right? And then we also get upset at the fact that other people are in, in the relationship or in society are also thinking about just themselves. The manosphere is talking about what men can get out of relationships, what men need out of relationships, men, men, men. And, you know, a lot of, I guess, the femisphere, if there is an opposite equivalent of that, or, you know, even I guess city girl culture, right. like it's very much, well, what can women get out of it? And what can we, you know, basically rob him blind and yeah, yeah, use yeah. all his money and men are out here talking about, well, just use her for her femininity and as a status symbol. And it's all about what can I get out of this situation mm. when relationships in order to work really are about people being selfless and thinking about what can I give to this? And is this a safe environment for me to give so much of myself? But that is exhausting. That almost looks foolish as well in a world where we promote the failures more than we do the successes. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of people who have won in love, who have, you know, trusted somebody, built a life with yeah. somebody and, and have truly benefited and know that they are better off for it. But we don't, we often don't amplify those stories of people who have genuinely loved in such an authentic and true and selfless way and one we often want to see people who have loved so selflessly or we we often are privy to people who have loved so selflessly and have been done wrong or mm. who have been cheated or cheated on or who have been abused you know and it causes us to fear. It causes yeah, us to yeah. be scared of, okay, well, if I love somebody, am I going to be used Child. in this way? Am I going to be treated in this way? Am I going to become a victim to love? And it's folly in some degree. And so it makes us kick into, okay, I still want the companionship. I still want the status mm. as well, because relationship has become um, increasingly so about status i still want the status that comes with marriage but i do not want to partake in the selflessness of it yeah. all because that looks foolish to right, me right, right. um and it also means that i'm inevitably going to lose rather than it being a risk and a chance that we take we can't we almost go into it assuming mm. that selfless mm -hmm, love mm -hmm. won't work mm. 
Wow. That's what I'd say. That's wonderful. Um, and then it, it then like th- that's me trying to be sympathetic to right. the human experience, <laughs> right? She said trying to be sympathetic. Yeah, that's me trying to be sympathetic to the human experience because I get it. I think it's normal to be scared. It's normal to know that love is a risk and right, not right. want to partake in ris- risky business. Right. Um, and relationships are a risk. But the way I see it going, which I think is completely unhelpful and like you said nonsensical is people using that that human feeling to now create narratives around men are the enemy or women are the enemy or this relationship thing needs to look specifically like this in order for it to work when one there is there are very few evidences of the fact that what is being preached actually works right right and oftentimes it's coming from the mouths of people who who themselves are not happy or who have not found what it is they speak of and I think that's one of the things that becomes challenging we sit on this podcast and people are constant constantly in our comments talking about well are you married to be talking about marriage we are not married but a lot of the people who were talking about men are this and women are that aren't married either and I think you would get a lot further with our advice (laughs) than you would with their advice because our advice is actually based on wisdom and not human pain and not personal pain. Whereas a lot of people are speaking from the place of pain and making it seem like, well, that's just how exactly. the game is. Exactly. It's actually not. That's how your your situation went. And this is the thing. We're also speaking from a place of, we actually desire to see healthy and happy relationships. Oh, sorry. We're not yes, <laughs> thank you. No, 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 no. We're not Go out on. here. We're actually not out here on a tip of trying to get one up on anyone else or expose people or like, oh, check out women or check out men. No, 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 no. We're airing out everybody's dirty, dirty laundry. laundry just so that we can have clean laundry. We actually want to see healthy, happy, thriving yeah. relationships, not just amidst ourselves and amidst our own friends yeah. and our own community, but the digital community and the global community yeah. that we're building. So if you happen across us and you're new, or if you're somebody from either the femisphere, the manosphere, whatever mm. s- crazy sphere yeah. you came from, we're not here to try and dictate to you how to live your life. At all. We're just speaking from a place of, we actually desire you to live your best life, mm. which is why we're giving you our best. Then we're not we giving you go. our worst. We're not speaking from a place of play, pain. pain. We're speaking from a place of this is what the best that we have to give you. Yeah. We're not giving you leftovers. We're not giving you um, anything that's come from a place of a traumatic experience yeah. that we have not healed from, quote unquote. And there's a lot of people out <gasps> here that are speaking with podcast mic from a place of pain. pain. We are speaking from a place of purpose. We And the purpose is we want you to have healthy and happy relationships. I've been reading a book which was courtesy of your recommendation yep. which is Skin in the Game and mm. it's been making me re- like really think about the digital space even though it's not necessarily focused on the digital space. Yep. I think one thing you have to inspect are people's motives and what it is they gain out of the narratives which they are creating. I think there are a lot of people who are saying things on the internet recklessly right mm-hmm, and irresponsibly mm-hmm, mm-hmm. creating an environment right. for men and women which they themselves wouldn't even enter right a lot of people are doing this for the clout for the attention for the money for the audience that it builds and the social status that comes with that even for the adrenaline that comes with controversy for some people that really gets them going but they themselves are not thinking about what this is doing for our generation because they don't care about the effects and that the um, fallout from their narrative because they're going to live their life in a very different way Mm. and I really do I really do draw on Kevin Samuel's life as an example for this and you guys already know you know I talked about him a lot you know seasons past when he was alive especially as somebody who really led this movement I really don't think that's the life a lot of people want to live in the sense that, yes, he probably had the audience, the attention, the clout, maybe even the notoriety. Um, And some people really do esteem him as a great leader. But for me, (laughs) the way you're talking, this is someone's dad, so I don't want to be disrespectful. People do esteem him as a great leader. But for me, uh, the, the... the evidence of a true good leader is about who they have 
given birth to and mm-hmm. the people who they have led mm-hmm. what is the fruit of their life mm-hmm. right and also for themselves were they able to lead themselves right. well i think we have to look at the lives of the people who we listen to and really weigh up do you live by what it is that you preach proof number is one in the pudding. and number two because the proof is in the pudding do i want to eat the pudding you're putting out to be fair some of the pudding looks good but then on closer it's inspection poison. it is not good it's poison you want to listen to people whose lives you would actually want to live yeah. to some degree yeah. obviously not not every part of everybody's life is desirable however would you take advice from somebody who really doesn't have the fruit of number one or number two actual investment in what it is they are saying and who it is they are speaking to and i think we think because people sit sit on mics and they give advice that they're investing in us but actually what people are doing is investing in themselves right they're building platforms right and they don't care about the carnage that is left in their trail because for them they're not going back there a lot of people are ruining the dating streets in a pool which they're not going to date in exactly do you get what i mean they're not going to date in that pool they're not going to pick somebody from that mm. pool so everyone is running around helter skelter confused as hell surrounding what to do and how to navigate the relationship pool and whether anyone has good intentions but they don't care about the fact that they've literally thrown a bomb into a room Absolutely. they're just going to close the door let it blow up in there and enjoy what's and happening because- out here that's what a lot of people are no biggest man thing that's what a lot of people mm-hmm. are doing mm-hmm. a lot of people are exploiting their platforms and it's confusing an entire generation of people and they're doing it because they know it's not going to affect exactly. them this because because they have no skin in the game. I can tell you rubbish advice because I'm not going to live by it. Precisely. And it's not going to affect me or impact my relationships or my perspective, which will then impact my relationships. And you know what's really funny is that really resonates with what I was thinking as you were speaking, which is that relationships are often meant to be between two people. But because we have opened a gate, which allows thousands of people to have perspectives, inputs, alleged investment says inside our relationships suddenly our relationships are not between you know Mm -hmm. one person and another person it's between us and the world menhood yeah yeah yeah. us and womanhood do you know what i mean now your partner becomes a caricature standing in the gap for thousands of women including women of your past Including men of your past, your parents, your parents, Mm-mm. your unhealed trauma, they all no of a sudden they individual. become proxy yep. for all of these things that you have not dealt with. Literally. And then suddenly you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to get one up on that yeah. person every single time. Yeah. This is why we are constantly having marriages that are failing because a lot of people are not seeing their partner, but they're seeing their partner yeah. as proxy yeah. like you are representative of everything that has broken me in the past yeah. and i will not allow you to break my future yeah. not knowing that seeing them in this way will inadvertently break your future it will damage your entire relationship and it's symptomatic of us not wanting to have relationships with individual exactly. people like you have to treat your partner as an individual as a person with a very mm-hmm. unique story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i think with the generalizations that happen online we can oftentimes lose that because oh, we're thinking we're dating every man exactly. or we're dating every exactly. woman and people are telling us every man acts like this every woman dates like that and it's like no men from your experience or from your observation and in fact it could even be great advice and quite cautionary but i now need to take that and assess the individual that is in front of me right. according to this information that i now have rather than plastering it on them as okay well you are this it's more so being mindful of let me inspect whether that is what you actually are Absolutely. based on your actions like the amount of stuff that's out there about oh your your partner could be a narcissist if they do this this that narcissism and diagnosing somebody with narcissism is something for qualified professionals to do but there are a lot of us walking around throwing around labels because of okay he didn't pass you the spoon he's a narcissist 
he's a narcissist or he said no I can't do xyz oh he's stingy um leave him sis sprinkle sprinkle I love that woman by the way (laughs) I love that woman so much her her advice is wild her advice is wild but that sprinkle sprinkle I added that to my vocabulary but like it's very much oh he didn't do this this means this he didn't do that this means that and it's like do you guys realize that you're dating human beings who make choices based on a wide range of different variables which are very unique to their lives that the person standing in front of you Absolutely. is not a caricature Absolutely. or a cartoon they are a makeup of a lifetime's worth of experiences and if you do not have the emotional intelligence and the mental capacity the to fortitude. actually handle a person the as fortitude. an individual as a unique individual then you really need to ask yourself are you ready to date this is the thing are you ready to date this or do you just thing. want to participate in online conversations or do you want to take this thing offline and actually be in a relationship with a real human being and it is not your responsibility or mantle to avenge all women or avenge uh, all men uh, in your proceedings with the individual that you that's are in purpose, relation like, with the funny thing is i wanted to bring up the example Ooh. of the moroccan footballer who has divorced from his babes yeah. but allegedly so the internet streets had said the professional Moroccan footballer Hakimi had allegedly put all of his proceedings, all of his properties in his, in his mother's, mother's name. name. So when his now, well, soon to be ex-wife was pursuing divorce proceedings and allegedly wanted half of his um, property, she couldn't get it because mm. it was all in his mother's name. Mm. Now, what was very alarming about this case that was not highlighted was he was actually being investigated for mm. several mm. sexual assault cases and alleged rape. Yep. That wasn't highlighted. Nope. But also what was quite troubling was how many men in response said that man is a genius. Said that he is, this is exactly what I would do in this particular this situation. Is She's not coming. loyal. All of this man yep. is the Messiah. Yep. So she was just men. after his money. She was a gold digger. And we have sp- we have spoken about this, especially for men. Women will come to you in a second, but I wanted to deal with the men first because that one was annoying me. And it actually led to several conversations with folks that I was just like, I'm going to end this conversation yeah. here because I can't believe you have this um, thought in mind. <laughs> this preoccupation, particularly by men, with gold that they don't currently have. And women digging for it. And women digging for it. And this whole notion of the only way that I will interact, the fear that interacting with other women will leave me liable to losing all of my riches, all of my wealth, that women only want me for my wealth, side by side with the endless pursuit of wealth anyway, in order to access the women. And thank you. And attract to them. The, to access the women that they know that wealth will attract. We and go. then get to that place and then complain, oh, these women only want me for, for my, my money. money. Well, my good sir, of course they do because Thank that's you. been your endless pursuit for the and past 10 years. this is why one thing that would actually benefit you is genuinely building a connection with someone before you amass all of this stuff. But because you want the baddies, because you want the girls who are attracted to the wealth, which I'm not, not coming after you, sick so hypergamy, you do yeah. the thing, baby girl. Hello. Um, I'm not coming for women like that and I'm not saying women like that are anything. Absolutely. But because you want to employ the other strategy you also have to deal with the things that come with it which is your wealth now being a key factor that has built this relationship into what it is and a key condition on which our commitment is based the goal that Hakimi has in comparison to your average guy and this is not a dig because in the same way that there's probably going to be girls that are light years they're the baddies do you know what I'm saying I'm not out here saying I'm trying to be like that at all the guys that people like Hakimi, that's a different tax bracket. In fact, that tax bracket is not included when they declare it. Facts. <laughs> you know that what I mean? Tax. That they don't even there declare. No it. There's a reason that. why that man would have put it in his mother's <laughs> name. Shan. That kind of that kind of money is sitting on mm-hmm. that one where I think I read a stat that was like they, they could be making close to 100k every week. Right, right, weekly. right, right. Yeah, oh, footballers. I'm that's a bank. different type of gold. For you to be using that kind of man right. as proxy is just symptomatic of where you find your value as yeah. a man. Your value is in how much you can provide. Yeah. And then you, like, that's where the bitterness towards women, comes which is from. unprovoked and unfounded, comes from. Because it is founded upon gold that does not yet exist. Facts. And I'm not sure as to whether it will actually ever exist. Not to For say you I don't to believe protect in you. it that greatly and this from is the, the thing. beginning. It's this whole idea of self preservation, but mm-hmm. also this whole. Um, need this obsession with trying to have objects trying to have and not just objects but also women as objects right thinking that you are some kind of thanos that you can be taking all of these baddies and then turn around and dictate 
okay, babes, not on my terms. Facts, you know what I mean? Facts. And don't think that the accumulation of wealth means that you are disqualified from needing to be a good person. Thank you. Because my issue was not even that the fact she was looking for his money. Thank you. My issue wasn't with the divorce. My issue was, hang on a second, you have been accused of sexual assault. Allegedly. Have some very big skeletons in your closet. And I think it's so unfortunate. And we've talked about in other episodes where, um, and I think some people's, feathers were a bit ruffled when we were talking about women making sure they secure themselves financially when they're in a relationship but a lot of people can weaponize the fact that they hold the wealth right or they have the the legal titles or the deeds or whatever against you to stop you from escaping a toxic situation with actually a bad person Right, right? right if she had now said okay crap but i've invested years into this marriage i've invested time with this man i've actually helped but and i think this also is another thing to point to the unpaid labor and oftentimes the the labor and work that women put into relationships that don't have a monetary price tag attached to it because a lot of people see okay he's made millions but they don't see the labor and the effort she's also put into being in a relationship with this man right but she's the one who's going to end up leaving with nothing and people will toot it as well that's the money is why she came but if and this For me, the overarching thing when I saw those comments from men was, why do you guys even want to get married? If you don't want to be in a partnership with somebody, and if you don't want to do the whole 50-50 thing, just be in an endless relationship where there is um, where there is that mutual agreement that my money is my money and your money is your money. But when you enter into a relationship, it is literally two people becoming one. People will want to enter into a relationship and not give their full selves, exactly. but take the fullness of who this woman Bro. is, literally absorb her, her youth, her energy, her unpaid labor and her capacity, and even cause her to be the vessel with which they build their future and their legacy by ho- having her body as a host to have his future children but when it comes down to it she is discardable May. she is somebody who can easily just be thrown away and replaced and you will protect yourself and everything you came into this with thinking that you do not have you do not owe her anything she's not a tool she's not an employee if you are if you want to hire her hire her but don't marry her as a form right. of marry um, right, hiring right, right. her without pay and i think that's what a lot of people are doing when it a lot of men and the modern a lot of what's happening in this manosphere is encouraging men to basically marry women as a way of getting slaves that they do not have to pay but they do not have to humanize them they do not have to love them and they do not have to cause for there to be any protection Mm -hmm, around mm -hmm, their future mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they are devoid of responsibility you do not have to have any responsibility over this woman who you are now calling your wife and i personally am angered by that because that's not the model of marriage we are called to have marriage in itself is inherently a divine and godly thing and even in a secular world the model of marriage is literally two people becoming one for richer for poorer for better for worse but a lot of people expect women to mean these vows from their heart but they say them with insincerity they actually don't mean any of it women have so little protection when it comes to relationships that are orchestrating by these rules and it's unfortunate because people think women don't need protecting that women should give themselves over with no not even reward but with no um security whatsoever and it's irresponsible but also like you said it dehumanizes and objectifies women into literally just being sex slaves housemaids child rearers cleaners Servants. servants 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 not partners servants and that's not how you build a marriage this is the thing so why do you even want to get married in the first place if you don't want to share your wealth don't get married this is the thing though they want to retain that sense of self-preservation but reap the benefits each have your cake and eat Eat it. it but i don't this is a large cake fellas this is a very very large cake and might i remind you that undisclosed assets when you get married is fraud it's a crime might i remind you so that's swift like just the rejoice and even the fact that it's actually misinformation so none of this has been confirmed yeah. there's actually been a it's number of articles alleged. <laughs> alleged the way that misinformation spreads, spreads on the internet but that particular kind of misinformation the fact that no one dared to say let me fact check and see is this actually accurate yeah just it's just an accurate representation of her precisely 
just shows the extent to which we are willing to believe the worst and revel in the worst mm -hmm. for marriage and there relationships we because there we are we so used to, we have normalized it so much that we are hearing marriages breaking all the time that hearing this, there were people that rejoiced. Yeah, There were people that were saying, aha, got them. Yeah. Aha, this is women. <laughs> and Aha, this, this is a representation of what they're like. And genuinely, I, I really want men to look at how foolish that is. Because if your son-in-law had done that to your daughter, what? you'd be fuming. And this is... You'd be fuming. And this is the issue that I have always had just in life in general. Why should it take proximity yep. or relationship yep. to you for you to understand that yep. this is bad? But exactly. Why? Why is it that all of a sudden, because it is somebody that's close to you, yep. suddenly it's an issue? It's always been the issue when it comes to understanding. Because you can't see women as human beings that actually feel pain. But also... Unless you are close to them to see them cry. But also it means that you know that men are nonsense. Because you oh, know... Oh, look, what? Look, look, what? Look, look, look. You what? know when people <laughs> stop calling them Don't be silly. Do you know what? What always gets me, you know what always gets me? When I see on the internet, when guys are like, oh, with my daughter, with my sister, I'm not going to let her do I'm this. I'm a protector I'm a protector like this. Because you know men are not I'm mad because they're your friends. You know because you know you your know friends it. are crazy. You know your no, friends no, no, are criminals. No, no. You know your friends, you know are, your friends criminals. are criminals. You know that these are people who you are enabling, Bruh. even if it's just with your silence, right? But you also want to protect the people you love. Right. But you want to exploit the people who have, like you said, no problem proximity Absolutely. to you just so that not just you can have your cake and eat it too but again skin in the game Hello. you will ruin society and culture and then get upset when it ruins the people that you love Hello. right uh -huh. you can't do that you can't you ruin can't the be streets. a protected entity literally here, baby. you are not a, you are not in a protective bubble if you ruin the culture the culture will ruin you Hello, this somebody. is the culture you are living in this is the society and the time that you are living Hello, in somebody. and the people who you love are going to be burnt exactly if you put the fire in the streets exactly. it's simple so you better be put your your fireman hat put on the match sticks st away start now there we go because the nonsense that you're doing is enough there we go we have <laughs> and it, no no because renee it makes me upset and it, it makes does, me scared does, to no, think about does. our generation no capping we want relationships we, do. we actually, we actually desire do. companionship and i think deep down there is a part of us that understands just how beneficial partnership is but you cannot have partnership and also maintain self-preservation that manifests in selfishness you can't be operating in this as if you were an individual Absolutely. in a partnership and this is why I will constantly stand by the fact that marriage and serious relationships are for the mature, it's the people who actually have understood what girl, the cost of what it is they're girl, saying actually is. But there are a lot you. of you guys who are operating as thieves <laughs> in relationships girl. because you keep accosting men or women to give you what it is that you Girl. want without paying them hello, adequately hello. for it. And this is not about mm -hmm. monetary exchange. It's about laying yourself down Absolutely. in exchange for their servitude, there right? If I'm going to love you selflessly, I'm going to expect a selfless love back. Exactly. And this is why I stand by this generation does not fear God. <laughs> Stop it. In conclusion, <laughs> this generation you know, the, I, does I, I not love, fear I, God. I, I love how you said this thing is for the mature because that whole conversation that's been going on on twitter of who pays on the day is 50 50 immature i saw it on the news like the news there's wards going on the, and this is there are actual you know what's wards. funny somebody literally commented that he said look at what our prime minister is doing in the uk you're talking about who this should pay anyways it's for the mature and i think that's a really nice segue to be speaking about our dear sisters because we've spoken about our brothers you guys are wild yeah, and these yeah. are the ways that you you need to fix up yeah, all, you know what i'm saying hopefully by now they're all gone the manosphere i know somebody's typing <laughs> you know that meme of the cat <laughs> <laughs> somebody's typing furiously <laughs> and it's like hey 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 before, before you, you, you press enter, sisters sister you press enter, we're getting to the women's segment <laughs> so just sit down there you know hold on for a second but also before you press send and you come for us in any way ask yourself is that mature is it? What will you gain? Nothing. Because you're sad. You're upset. You should click on betterhelp.com for to my sisters, sisters for 10% first, off your healing journey. Offering you a discount. You should consider that first before you type and enter that comments. But anyways, moving to um, 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 our dear sisters yeah. and how they've also been behaving. Because as you were saying, there's a couple of different um, 
polities, oligarchies approaching. Whoa, yeah, 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 Whoa. yeah. We're bringing, we're bringing, Whoa. Up, we're bringing up the big politic <laughs> words. Um, there's been a number of different factions, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, are yeah. arising. <laughs> you have, you know, City Girl FC City out Girl here. FC. We we out here. We getting money from men. Ching. You know, what I'm saying we ching ching, kabling, all that kind of stuff. Hello, money, money, and ensuring and expecting that men mm. pay for us. Yeah. We also have the um. Folks that are perhaps taking the God thing a bit too far. Mm. Um, it makes me think of the conversation that we had after that uh, viral podcast clip went of. I think it was like Melanie King, like speaking. You to- have a rebellious spirit. <laughs> the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel. <laughs> you are of the- Babylon. <laughs> You have the faction of feminist stop it, okay? We you have the faction of femininity that is demanding yeah. that other women <laughs> forcefully demanding that other women, in order to get the prize of manhood and marriage, marriage. should subdue their spirit and become submissive to all men in society as per is written allegedly Which in somewhere. Which itself is a perverse in, gospel. Allegedly and written, it's quite demonic. Written somewhere and could be in the Bible. To a Jezebelic there we go. Activity. There we go. And then there's actually a faction of women. I like. I think it might even warrant a further conversation. Who don't want children, yeah. don't want families. Yeah. They're not interested in being with anyone, and yeah. actually want to live a single life. Yeah. So there's different factions different. popping up that are contributing to lackluster relationships. And I would like you take your pick. Who okay. you wanna? Who you wanna? So- Firstly, the Not Melanie King first. situation. I knew you were going to go there first. I knew it. <laughs> I literally, when I saw the video on TikTok, I came home. You were so angry. And I stood behind Renee. I said, Renee, I was shocked. I have never been so angered. Mate. Like, it's been a while yeah, since yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. something on social media Absolutely. actually bring rage mm-hmm. out of me. Um, and I think what was ugly about that whole situation was the weaponization of Christianity exactly. against women. And that's something which we have seen countlessly as time has gone on the the use of religion to create a narrative that certain um, women's embrace of the free will and choice and uniqueness which god gave them hello. as demonic hello, hello. and making them seem as though they are a threat black women have gone through it mm. in through slavery it's mm-hmm. justification for you're why rebellious. they were raped you're rebellious you're a jezebel spirit um all of these things it's giving regurgitated narratives number one and number two it is a perversion of the scripture which is something for me never will sit well because as much as you may want people to act right according to what you consider to be acting right do not co-opt the lord's name and use his name in vain to cover up your misogyny Mm -hmm. and not be able to actually expound on scripture because she couldn't really quote many bible verses in that entire episode you're not able to really expound and teach scripture to really justify what you are saying you are saying hot words which you've heard and you think it sounds deep and you think it sounds revelatory when actually you are doing the thing which you are chastising which is the devil's work you no 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 what she i will call a spade a spade the way she shouted at that girl the way she called her the thing she called her was in itself quite demonic and it's so ironic that she was trying to cast something out of her which was living inside of herself i think it's important no no oh no no let's keep it real let's keep it real just because first i like what you said about this whole subduing yourself and submitting yourself i think it's important to remember that god calls us to be submitted to our husband not to all men and that's a model which a lot of us have heard so many times that it has made us resent the idea of submission because it feels like oppression and a lot of people are causing their model of submission and the way they treat women to be one of oppression and not of leadership and also not of the um the the thing that we're called to match submission with which is love and also submission through the scriptures from a christian point of view is as a result of being loved the only time you are called to submit and respect to your husband if he um, doesn't necessarily love you well is if he himself is not a believer but right, you chose right, to marry him. Right, right. But for the Christian model of a believer marrying a believer, it is love your wife as Christ loved the church, submit to your wife as the church submitted unto him, which then draws us to a bigger thing. If you do not have a revelation of Christ's relationship with his church, you cannot 
have a marriage that follows a biblical model. There we go. Because the flaw of human beings is that we desire to gain power mm -hmm. over one another. We desire to have some kind of rulership over one another. And it's not just women wanting to have rulership over men. It's also men wanting to have rulership over other people. Exactly. And that's why we see all kinds of inequalities which exist in our world, like social hierarchies in the forms of racism, Hello. caste systems, mm -hmm. social um, class systems, Systems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. capitalism, all of mm -hmm. these things that we see in terms of social class inequality, slavery, trafficking, all of this is the manifestation of the evil which dwells in human Hello beings' now. hearts to want to, one, have power, and two, benefit from people without having to care for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're seeing with relationships in our generation, which is we want to benefit from people, but we don't want to have the responsibility that or comes caring with caring with them. for them. Exactly. But that is inherently irresponsible and completely anti-biblical because we're serving a God who first gave us a sacrifice to die to save us with no actual promise that we would love him back. And yet he still laid down there his life for us with no assurance but a lot of us want assurance shout out to davido Hello. a lot of us want assurance without Amanda. sacrifice another trifling man oh, oh, <laughs> oh the best the issue here is if you do not know how to love selflessly mm -hmm. you're gonna struggle when it comes to marriage and it's not because marriage is about because when people hear love selflessly they hear suffering exactly right? and it was something that i was describing to you that other, or somebody the other day which was yes there is a suffering but something that is so beautiful about christ's resurrection anyway post easter vibes hello one thing that's so beautiful about christ's resurrection is the suffering was temporary exactly. and when compared to the future glory it pales in comparison this is the and thing. i think a lot of us really really want the glory that comes with relationships and not just the status i'm talking about the fact that you're in a safe committed healthy thriving relationship we want the glory separate from the suffering forgetting that the suffering gives birth to, to the, the glory. glory come on now pastor. honest to god you the suffering gives birth it. to the glory but also marriage is in itself a form of death to self i thing. am committing myself to loving you yeah. past my own desire to preserve myself this is the thing. and if men don't model that if women don't model that we're going to have selfish immature people in relationships with each other and i'm not saying it's a bad thing to not want to make such a commitment on even the bible talks about it's better for you to be single yeah, you the can thing, just choose right? this is to the be thing. single but because we want to have sex because we want to play house because thing. we want to have the benefits of marriage we run into things which we're actually not adequately prepared, prepared for, for or we have no true deep understanding of if more of us had a revelation of how selfless marriage is less of us would want it this is the thing right and i think it speaks to that segment of women that are starting to wake up and say do you know what actually i don't want, it. I don't want to have kids I don't want to get married because the current situation, the current state of affairs is that we won't be able to create that kind of glory for, in each, order other. To, for each other, but also for a future generation. There we go. There we because go. so many of us, and do we even have time to touch on kids and how many of us use p um, kids as kind of proxy for a desire to leave a legacy without providing care? Because children are often the unsung heroes, often the silent generation mm -hmm. that then pick up the slack in the next they generation the when they become suffer. adults. They're the ones that suffer. But to pick up on the whole Melanie King situation, girl. Oh, Melanie, please. I was hot mad. I was hot mad. First and foremost, I don't like poor delivery obviously of scripture but i dislike any attempts to tear down another woman Facts. on a public platform Facts. and the fact that the thing about someone like melanie king is she stands as proxy to the subsect of women that think that their proximity to patriarchy will give them power and will yet. give them access it's always and yet no sorry no i, I was gonna yet. say something which i really shouldn't say yeah. but yet you do not possess the prizes and this is and this is another thing right it's again this whole attempt to seem palatable to the patriarchy seem palatable to the current power structures in order to elevate yourself it reminds me of what we were talking about in the last episode where even though you yourself are being oppressed even though you yourself can see in your economy class that somebody in business class is doing better than you because of your alignment and desire to be in business class you are perfectly fine 
chatting crap about the person that is in the IOC in economy because you perceive yourself as doing better, better. than them. Facts. I just don't think that it is wise Facts. or advisable. And when we are thinking about relationships, we have completely devalued what it means to be in relationship yes. with someone. That is your partner, life partner. That is your friend. Like when we even think about the things that we find desirable in men and women, what saddens me so much is it is often earmarked with these kind of characteristics, right? Be a submissive person, be feminine, be someone that listens. But it's like, okay, after you've done those kind of things, when you commune with someone, you're not just going to be the feminine fancy all the time, are you? You're going to have to have conversations. Likewise, when you're engaging with men, he's not always going to be the strong protector or whatnot. Can you laugh with well, this person? Well, how about that? What a shocker. Like, he's not after, always going to be the alpha I mean? male. So after he has paid the bills, what do you do then? After he has bought you and taken you on, you know, a shopping spree, what do, what you, do you do, do then? Then after, because there are people, and this is how abuse is able to pervade in so many households, right? Because we think that these things are the indicators of a healthy man and a healthy relationship. But this is how so many of us have grown up seeing abusive parents, Come on. abusive situations, because no one has actually called out these men, because not even just men, women as well. Yeah. Nobody has called out these abusive, trauma inflicting people because by part and parcel they match up to our expectations our culturally defined yep. expectations as to what manhood should be there as to what go. womanhood should be like when we think this is why you know we believe in jesus this Hallelujah. is why we believe in the bible because it has a description as to what love is and love has characteristics mm. love is kind love does not boast like it has characteristics but not possessions mm. not material possessions and the 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 more that we um allow our definitions of love to be guided by materialism the more we give ourselves license to, or we open up our households to be susceptible to evil, Abuse. which is why evil creeps in, which is All why evil maintains its foothold as well. It doesn't, is we this is the seeing. thing. How many people... I used to ask the question all the time to my friends. I even, I think me and Courtney have had conversations about it. Yeah. So like left field, but how is it that people that are at their prime, financially, materially, whatever, are often guilty of the most like perverse hmm. crimes. Why is it that there is such a strong correlation between money, power, and perversion? Evil, perversion. Evil. Not even just, it's not normal. Do you know what I mean? Let's like the kind of scandals, it's it. almost as if the more that you earn or the more that you have every kind of social power, the more perverse your misdoings and misgivings are. Because How your many heart times goes unchecked? And that's Unchecked. the thing. And I'm so glad you brought up that word communion. Because when it comes to us actually being in relationships with somebody, if you're going to commune with someone, it's it surrounds the word communion. And right. what is communion? A symbol of a death. Exactly. Right? I think it's so beautiful that you brought up that example because the reason why we see evil creep into people's lives, but also creep into a relationship is because the people have committed to each other in word, exactly. but their hearts are Fuck. untouched and unchanged, right? Their hearts are far and one thing you have to do when you are in a relationship is really contend with the matters of the heart right what are my insecurities what are my fears what are my idols that's a word we bring up a lot on this podcast what are the things I have put my assurance exactly. and my safety in what are the worthless things which I think hold my existence and provide me with security and I think a lot of people enter into relationships and evil is able to creep in because their hearts have gone unexamined and unchecked and unsubmitted and uncircumcised mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what we see in relationships now which is why i am completely disgusted by how many people think cheating is okay um, in a relationship right that is a surefire way to see you have allowed evil to creep into first of all your heart and so many people's hearts go unchecked but out of the heart flows the issues of life is if thing. you are not careful your life is going to be a, a huge petri dish of just but no but honestly honestly it's going to just be a la a wasteland full of filth right your relationships aren't working as much as you have money the things that go on in your mind the things that go on in your life 
don't work because your heart is so full of evil Absolutely. and what we find are people are telling other people to get into relationships even though their hearts are full far, of filth far, far, how far. can you commit like relationships really are about the heart right, they're right. about and that's why i love you know love hearts all it really is about the soul of the person where they make their decisions where they've put their treasures it's about the heart and so many of us have unclean hearts and we're being told that we do not have to clean our hearts. We do not have to deal with the evil that Absolutely. resides in us. We do not have to transform our way of thinking, but we can get into a relationship and seek out the benefits that come with it. You will end up destroying everything that comes your way. You will end up destroying your partner and you'll end up destroying your children. Needlessly. Needlessly and selfishly. And it really is a character issue because it I'm is. so happy you brought up the cheating example because if there is one thing that I despise more than anything in relationships, it is cheating. Mm. Like cheating, we have seen how cheating wrecks relationships, Finishes it. wrecks households, transforms people into the worst of the worst. And I think what Freud's frustrates trust. me around the narrative of like, if he is this particular man, if he is a high earner, if he is somebody that is respected in society, he is a cheater. The issue is not that he likes being with multiple mm -mm. women. The issue is that we have normalized deceptiveness and a as lack a of self-control. Lack of self-control, lack of self-discipline. Are you telling me that a man that is able to make bank, he is able to discipline himself to grow his wealth, is not able to discipline his body? And can you really discipline your body if you cannot discipline your members and your body parts? Mm. Really? relationships are also a discipline mm. they're not just a place of liberty and in hedonism <laughs> enjoyment <laughs> but you have to the only time that somebody will be able to live like that is they believe that relationships are a holy place right a place that require a cer certain level of consecration and dedication um and refinement as well like we change for the best interest of our partner we think about okay what benefits me, but what benefits them as well. Like even within our friendship, right? There are certain amounts of character development we've had to go through because yeah. we know this aspect of my character does not benefit my friendship exactly. with you. And if we want to move forward, this thing has to either get has left to. behind or I'm going to allow it to pose a threat to our ability to be intimate with each other. And so many people are not willing to make the sacrifice, not necessarily of even money, but of old habits and of old ways of thinking <sighs> because they do not see the value in pressing forward with their partner and doing something in their best this interest. Do you this get what I mean? Thing. And this is why I'm saying, do y'all actually want to be married? I think a lot of people need to reevaluate. Why are you even getting married then? Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I want to find that one person. Why? What? Why? No, honestly, why? I just want to understand. Because if you are going to be having the conversation around 50-50, do you really want to be one? You Genuinely. want to be yourself. You be by yourself If you then. do want to be having that conversation about 50-50. Or what's sure? mine is mine. If you're going to act single in a marriage, just be single. But people want marriage benefits. Ben they want relationship benefits without doing the work. But unfortunately... That's why you lot should stop knacking. I'm I telling you that now. Anyway, I'm not trying to police anybody's sexuality, but is it helping us? No, but, re but this is the thing because it will now go on and impact the next generation and how we see relationships, how we conceive of security and faith and character and all these kind of things. And broken people break, break people. people. Even break people that have not existed yet. Just knacking. Anyhow. Why? Just this sex. But guys, all, all we're saying, in essence, please be sober by then. Sober. Please oh. apply wisdom to the things that can really alter your life and the sure. lives of people in your life. Um, and also, grow up. And heal. Please, mm. please, please heal. Not saying that you have to be fully healed. No, because there will be certain, perfect. you don't have to be perfect, but commit to healing. There we go. Don't use the relationship as a battleground mm. for, a, or a stomping ground Facts. rather, for your unhealed trauma. And commit to 
building. Bruh. Please commit to building. Like you and your partner should be working together. Team, tag team. Together to build the life that you actually want, okay? Do not be tearing each other down. Like we, this is just generally some some sister to sister advice Honestly. because we've been under the whole like, oh, uh, build a man, do this, do that, submit. Potential. And he's not going to give you everything so, that and you he, want. And gr- hmm? okay, listen, oh, no. put all that stupid stuff aside. Build the life that you want with someone who's also committed to helping you Absolutely. build, right? And who you feel safe giving your time, Please. your energy, and your future and your body to. Your body. Honestly, do not be dedicated to tearing each other down. Do not tear yourself down if you are not married yet, or maybe if you're you're in a situation or an entanglement, whatever it is. But un-entangle also yourself unentangle yourself. yourself. Honest to God, because it will become a noose. A noose <laughs> is also another form of a tangle. Stop it. I'm just being serious. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, please, if you can, silence the voices that are 100%, dedicated 100%, to tearing down your perception 100%. of the people who you want to engage in intimate community, um, intimate, intimate relationship with or in communion with. You cannot commune with something which you dishonor. Exactly. You cannot commune with something you do not see value in. You will end up abusing that thing. And so really and truly plug into things which will not only teach you the right thing, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. also will help you pursue the goals that you actually have mm-hmm. because i think a lot of this content is actually taking us further and further exactly. away exactly. from the goals we have and we just don't realize it because this it's entertaining is this is the thing and sisters also have hope mm. please 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 i know a lot of people that are listening are coming from a background where they've never seen a healthy relationship before where they're constantly bombarded both on social media but also in real life broken families <sighs> abusive relationships Bruh. cheating Bruh. lying stealing beatings please have hope that there are relationships out there that are healthy not without resistance not without suffering but healthy healthy just in the same way how you can be healthy and still be suffering from a couple of scars you've got Mm -hmm. a couple of bits and things that you need to shake off you can still have a healthy body and that for those that do desire a relationship we're honestly praying that you we are praying for your future for your legacy we are praying for a healthy family unit we are praying for your future relationship for it to be healthy happy whole and hearty heart filled so those of you that feel like you don't have hope right now we are sending a healthy dose of hope your way we are praying for you we're praying for your families lord we're praying for your partner facts Honestly, we're praying for your God, partner we really do pray do a, that do a thing this, this group of women listening to us who are part of the system Come on now. will actually experience the joy and the beauty that comes with safe healthy relationship Amen to that. and that their futures will actually be secure in you and that they'll experience True blessing true and not blessing. loss. True faith. But even a loss that leads to gain. A loss that leads to gain. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm also praying for the brothers. We extra for you. Lord, I'm even help them. Help I'm, their hosts. I'm even Just bringing in. Them, we're bringing Jesus. in the prophetic um, intercessors from <laughs> the mountain years. for the bad them. <laughs> we'll bring on the bad them too. Because, you know, sometimes it's one of them ones where we're praying for you, bros. But we need the bros to, to pray, pray for, for you. you. So yeah. we'll bring in the bros to pray for you and, you know cover you and anoint you because y'all need some oil but um sisters we hope that you enjoyed that conversation we know that it was an interesting topic we know No, because discuss. that thing you yeah, said no, about no, hope really has did. really like remember a few episodes ago yeah, yeah, I, thought, yeah. I was like i think we've just lost hope and we i think have. It's very losing sad. hope and losing faith it's is sad. the first step towards downfall and i think our generation when it comes to relationship because we are lacking so much hope yeah understandably yeah we need to break <sighs> this is why we need a upstanding to my brother's community so we can just intermix because back in the day when people wanted to meet folks it wasn't on social media yeah. and online it was character references mm-hmm. from community members you know what i mean and there we are so many unsung heroes so many men and women out there who are having relationships that are working this is the thing we need to find them and bring them on the. we'll pod. bring them on the podcast guys we'll bring some healthy relationships on this podcast to give you some hope this channel this community this organization is yeah. all about hope. hope it's all about planting the seeds for a better future which is coming to you if you're listening to this podcast 
Hallelujah. Glory. So sisters, we hope you enjoyed that episode. We would love to hear what are your thoughts on modern relationships? Do you have hope? Are you intentionally single? Are you seeing someone? Is it going well? If so, let us know. Please. The <laughs> sisters need to know. The sisters need to know if Please. you've been married for, you know, over five years. If you've been married six months. Hell, if you've been married, if you got married yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> congratulations. Come over and tell us how it's going, sis. To yes. be fair, these days, anyone now. who passes a successful talking stage has succeeded. Hello. <laughs> if you go into that registry and it was good come on over we'd love to hear from you but sisters we are sending love and light your way and of course you can send that love and light our way by following us on all of our social media platforms the lovely the dashing the wonderful the pretty in pink miss pretty why are you so pretty? I don't know. <laughs> it's my mom. <laughs> Thank you to my mom <laughs> and my pops for interceding. Hallelujah. Lady that's pretty in pink. She's giving cherry blossom. It's giving chocolate cherry blossom. It's, it's spring, giving spring strawberry chocolate to my left at CD Boateng. And of course, you can come over and say hi to me over here at Renee Kapuku. Follow us on all of our social media, like all of our social media. It's a mandate. You know, <laughs> at this point. This is your mantle, yeah. your prophetic anointing. Um, at to my sisterhood, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn for the professional girlies. Come on. Out here. Twitter, it, like literally everything, everywhere. Everything, we're here. And the last thing that you can do for us in order to research that hope on a mm. weekly basis, Mm. subscribe to the mailing list there we go www.tomysisters.com you can't miss it it's pretty easy to remember it's yeah. tomysisters.com you're there you're there but sisters Being we are gosh. sending love light and most importantly hope your way you yeah. have a hopeful and wonderful week and we will see you back here next week on sunday yet again and until then keep glowing and growing we're Renee and Courtney, your online sisters, and we're on a mission to help women across the world become the best version of themselves through the power of sisterhood. That's why we've written To My Sisters, a guide to building lifelong friendship. From working out how to achieve your dreams to setting boundaries and managing expectations, this essential handbook will show you how to fully embrace the power of friendship and community. Packed with practical advice and personal stories from our decade-long friendship, we'll give you all the tools and advice you need to find, make and keep lifelong friendship. To My Sisters is available now online and at all good bookshops.